Thank you, Jay. Um, we've only got two or three questions left. Um, in, 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 this, um, in this particular um, ending part, um, the question I have is, your recent interviews talk about setting up a future shift conference, a series of getting back to nature and living in a post-cataclysmic world. What type of world do you think that will be? We know you are an advocate of living closer to nature, like the indigenous tribes of Africa, Australia, South America, and the U.S. Could you paint us a picture of what life will be like based on your research and even your meditations after the cataclysm? Uh, it will be a... Uh, it's a really, really nice place. And um, uh, everybody... Uh, uh, the, the, we're, not, we're not totally, completely indigenous like the aborigines, um, we have like we have balloons and we can get around and and transport around and uh, um, but we're we're living a lot closer to nature but we're still connected to each other and uh, we're connected to each other you know maybe not through the internet but maybe I don't know I, we have to start thinking of of, of how we want to do this and uh, uh, you know but the world that I see is a world um, devoted where people are devoted to um, to craft and to meditation and to uh, nature and to uh, um, getting along in, in in finding ways to assimilate uh, but keep your own individuality and uh, people will assimilate will 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 go to groups of like-minded beings so. There will be small villages that make just bicycles, really good ones. And another small village will make something else, and and but everything will be the, of, of a high quality, like never we don't have now. And it will be closer to a, to a natural quality. Everything will be, and and we'll regain our our psychic abilities that are have gone you know have gone uh, dormant, and um, we'll be in touch with uh, nature in, in a profound way which we aren't now and uh, and and it'll be a lot nicer it'll be a lot slower um, but at the same time you know you'll have the dew and you'll have the alchemy and you'll have complete gnosis so what more do you need you know you have, you'll have your family and, and, and everyone will live in a kind of a uh, a natural utopia in, our, in the way that we're supposed to live, and you know we're, we're going to finally shed technology. And um, uh, I know it sounds crazy, but in the golden age, you don't have to even you don't even need clothing. So uh, you know it's just what your imagination uh, can conjure and what the magnetic field will allow, and uh, what you can do with alchemy and your own personal disciplines and practices. But anything is pretty much possible. That's what Sophia wants. Thanks, Jay. Um, the answer is a good segue to Sandra's question. Uh, Jay, uh, have you heard of the gift economy model as opposed to a barter economy model? One of our members, Lua, brought it up on the forum, and we've had a lot of interesting discussions with it. In the barter economy, which we have now, a person must have something to offer in order to receive something they need. It doesn't matter if the barter is between two people who trade items or if money is used as a medium between them. The fundamental principle of a barter system is that someone who doesn't have anything value to offer doesn't deserve to receive anything of value. In the gift economy, the economic system is based first on the principle that everyone in the basic unit will receive needs equally to the basis of the need, not value. The th foundational principle of a gift economy is that everyone has a basic human right, that, and these include adequate shelter, food, water, clothing, and medicine, and that every single person within the economic unit will make sure that every other person has these needs met. Some indigenous tribes have used this model. The question we have is, have you heard of the gift economy, and what do you think of it as a mechanism after we go through the chaotic times these coming years? Well, I think you know. Um, I would actually hope that there uh, we, there would be neither a barter economy or a gift economy. There actually be no economy. Um, that would sounds a little more suitable to what I would want. Um, you know, we don't really 
We're, we're, we're looking at everything from the wrong way. We, we, the, everything is here for us. There is no, there, there, there should, there's no really need for anyone to starve. There's, there's tons of food everywhere. Um, there's tons of water everywhere. If we could get the corporations to quit polluting uh, and get them, uh, uh, you know, in, in, in my no economy, there would be no corporations. Um, then, you know, there, you know, uh, uh, in the Aboriginal society in Australia, the, a three-year-old child could completely exist without their parents. They knew where all the food was. They knew where all the water was. And we're talking about in the middle of a desert with no water. They knew where the water was. And you know, so it's it's us that have forgotten. Um, and uh, what we really are, and we are, um, we think that you know, civilization is civilized when actually it isn't, and it is a it's a, a world raping uh, organization. And the thing is, it was necessary. Civilization was Sophia. It was necessary at a certain point so that we could all connect. And then we could all trade info on everything that there is so that we, she, could gain total and complete enlightenment. So th this part of this thing is necessary, but for hundreds of thousands of years, humans lived without cities, without civilization, and they didn't have war, and they got along just fine, and all the stories that you heard that they were grunting and 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 just cavemen in caves is just absolutely not true. That Jared Diamond did forensic research into hunter gatherers and found that they had no cavities, no osteoporosis. They lived to be old age. They had a high infant mortality rate, but for the most part, they were they were really really healthy. And uh, I'm not saying that we're going to go all the way that far back, but I think we have to get away from this whole idea that we need economies. We don't really need anything. Everything is available to us. We're just not thinking in the right way. I mean, I got a pine forest. It's about a half a mile from my house, you know, that could provide me with uh, uh, two handfuls of pine seeds every day. But you just sit there and they rot and they just go fall on the ground and nobody cares about them. And, and there's, all, you know, it's everywhere. And we just have to look. So that's how I think. I think we have to rethink how we're doing everything. And so socialist answers and capitalist answers, that's just, that's just the old crapola regurgitated in a different form. Uh, Jay, I appreciate that. Uh, it just occurred to me that while I was listening to your response, basically we're intellectually talking about the Taurus, but we haven't incorporated it to, and if we had, we wouldn't be worried about the economies because then we exactly. are having everything provided and manifest. Exactly right. Now you got it. Once once you reach enlightenment, economies seem kind of silly, actually. So we got to get from the intellectual back into the heart and through the penal and incorporate all of this, and then we we won't be wasting your time asking the questions that you've already answered. Very good, and also that, that might be simplistic, but. No, not at all. In fact, you can't solve the, a political problem at a political level. So where do you go? You have to go above it. Where's that? Well, that's in the hyperdimensional Taurus is the answer to it all. And you can you you, you can you can grow trees trees. Okay, I, I'm going to get really crazy. But tr if you do you know these you know the old that that, it, that the crops grow better uh, in a, on a farm closer to the farmhouse. That this is a maximum of farming, and I don't know if you knew that or not, but but but, but crops uh, as you get, as you go to a farm, a family farm, you will see that as you get closer and closer to the farmhouse, the corn gets more robust, everything looks better, and 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 farmers have always okay. noted that, and that's because they're living closer to the field that the loving couple, the farmer and his wife, are making. All right, they they make a or they form a huge bubble. Uh, when, when people are in love, and, um, uh, uh, and and so if you just live your right life, you know trees will gain ten times more fruit than they would normally. The Aborigines 
um, didn't go out hunting. The kangaroo herds followed the aborigine tribes around because they loved to hear their dancing and singing at night around the fire. And so they would just go down, walk a few hundred yards, and there would be a kangaroo, and they would have dinner. Um, so it, it, it's like you have to change the way that you think about what, everything that you're looking at. And, and when you do, you see that the answers are really pretty simple. I mean, when the first uh, Irish Scots got to Tasmania, they, 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 they thought the people there that they found must be incredibly uncivilized because they didn't even know how to light a fire. And then they found out later that they did know how to light a fire because they found campfires um, after they killed them all, by the way. And um, uh, and now we know that the Tasmanians, which is about where Seattle is, very chilly uh, in Tasmania, the Tasmanians, the original Tasmanians, kept themselves warm through body fire practices just like the Tibetans keep themselves warm in Tibet by, by pumping up the chi to the point where they're sweating in a snowstorm. So we've lost our touch with who and what we are, and that's what we have to find, and that's where we're going. Whether we like it or not, we're going back to this. Well, I just wanted to say one thing real quick. It's not another question. I really appreciate the clarification, and I also wanted to say that I appreciate the fact that Lua brought up the discussion on all of this because your answer just, for me anyway, put it all together. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, Jay, um, as we end this discussion, um, we wanted to ask you one final question. Many people fear death because they fear the unknown and they fear change. But fear is just a mindset drummed into us by people that wish to control us. The truth is, change is neither good or bad. As we pass through this birth canal in these coming years, as implied by the Vesica Pisces at Shark Cathedral, what final message do you want to say to people as we live through these times? Um, you have to do two things, and you have to, and you have to go fast. You have to um, take care of you and your family on a physical level, in other words, you've got to get close to a water supply. You've got to have food. You've got to start thinking about how you're going to survive um, on a very real level. And then you have to um, uh, uh, work on uh, daily uh, like a monk um, at, your, uh, at your chi gathering, we'll call it, your alchemy. And you have to do both of them simultaneously. And if you do that, um, you actually have... I don't know. I don't know what Cliff would say. Maybe a 75% chance with a little luck of surviving uh, and through getting through it in really good shape. Yeah, I, th I think it's if it's the data caps, right? It's more like 99%, but we won't go there. <laughs> yeah. um, th I agree. Thank you very, <laughs> thank you very much, Jay. I hope yeah. it's been enjoyable. Yeah, I hope it's been enjoyable for you as it has been for us. If not, bad luck, mate. Like Cliff, you two have been an inspiration to many. Mahatma Gandhi said, A coward is incapable of ex exhibiting love. It is the prerogative of the brave. Your love for humanity shines through with the bravery you exhibit every day when you go out and shed light on the truth with a fearless attitude. On behalf of Fox and all the members of the WebBot Forum, we thank you for your time, your bravery, and your love. May you and Sharon have many pies to come. Namaste. Hey, thanks a lot, you guys, and uh, practice your alchemy. <laughs> thank you.